Hey everybody, this video is a little bit more uh, run and gun than most of mine, but I was really excited to show this little wave share. It's the Compute Module 4 PoE board and another board that I just got in the mail, the SourceKit PyTray Mini. Both of these boards are new CM4 carriers that are actually going to be commercially available. The WaveShare board is already for sale and the source tray is going to be available very soon. And uh, it's exciting because um, the official CM4 I.O. board, which has every feature in the book that you could ever want, uh, this is still hard to get. Uh, so it's nice to see that there's alternatives. Um, a couple of the things that I like about these are for the Pi Tray Mini, this little guy, it's the exact same footprint as the Pi for Model B, so you can actually put it in the same cases, most of the same cases, that you can put a regular Pi 4 Model B in. Like this is one of my little acrylic uh, trays that I put these in when I build a cluster and stack them on top of each other. Uh, it, it doesn't have every feature in the books. It doesn't have uh, any PCIe lane exposure. It doesn't have a, a mini PCIe slot or anything like that, but it does have the Pi 4 GPIO pins in the same location, so you could put many Pi hats on here out of the box. It also has USB-C for power, which is nice. And it has a nice switch for switching. If you have EMMC on the board like this one, you can turn on on or off EMMC boot for flashing the Pis. So there's a couple things that I really like about this. It has the gigabit uh, ethernet jack. It has USB 2.0. It doesn't have 3.0 like the Pi 4. That's because it doesn't have a chip in it for that PCIe to USB bus. Uh, and then it has a full-size HDMI slot. And there are some compromises with this. Um, it also has micro SD over here. There are some compromises just due to the form factor, but there is going to be another model in the works, from what I hear, that's going to have an M.2 slot or micro PCIe, probably on the back side. So you could have that Pi 4 Model B size and form factor and use in many different cases, but with super fast storage or a fast Wi-Fi 6 card or something like that. It's a really neat little project. You can go to sourcekit.cc to find out more about this. The other one that I'm showing is the, the WaveShare board. And uh, this guy, it's colored blue like all of WaveShare's other boards. I also have uh, a WaveShare CM3 board that, that does PoE. And uh, they make a lot of really neat little accessories for Raspberry Pis. And this, again, is very large. It's, it's a little more for the development side of things. You wouldn't probably use this in a final product that you're building. But what they did was they took the same footprint as the I.O. board, the, the large one from Raspberry Pi, and they stuck inside of it a few different things. So the first big difference is they moved over the Ethernet jack uh, to where the, the TF or micro SD card slot is, and they put it here. Uh, and they put the micro SD card slot on the underside up at the top. So that's a little bit different. They also put in four USB 3.0 ports. And the way they did that was they took the PCIe lane and put the VLI VL805 chip on it. So just like the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B has, it has USB 3.0 right on the board. However, it has four, four jacks. So it's nice to have that on this board. Uh, this could make for a nice little... Um, uh, a, a nice little PC build type thing because all the ports are on one side. The other nice trick that this board has is the PoE support. So this power circuitry right here, which is in the same space on the uh, the regular CM4 I.O. board as the PCIe slot, and that's why they had to remove it because they just didn't have the right space for it. Um, they took that out and they put in this power circuitry so that you can power this board entirely through the Ethernet jack. It, it just makes it more convenient if you have power over Ethernet in your house or in your office or somewhere. You can just plug in one cable to power everything, and that's really cool. You could even build a cluster like I do for my Raspberry Pi Dramble out of these just using Ethernet. It also includes some more headers on it with little jumpers so that you can uh, set everything up without having to buy a separate pack of jumpers like I had to do at the main I.O. board uh, so that you can do things like turn on, on and off uh, EMMC boot, you can set the voltage uh, for the uh, GPIO pins. You can turn on or off power over Ethernet, and it still has that fan header that, that was also in the regular I.O. board. It costs uh, $40 or $50. Uh, I'll put the actual price on the screen. I don't remember exactly, uh, but it's, it's neat to start seeing these boards coming out. And there's a few more that I should be hopefully able to get in the mail and start reviewing soon. But it's great to see this because now I think more people are going to start building some really neat devices with these things. 
Anyways, I'm going to be getting back to a more regular posting schedule. This week was a bit of an anomaly just because I had a few different things going on with the Kubernetes series and things like that that I was trying to get wrapped up. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.